We're here at Piranha Off-Road Products today to discuss what might be called secret caravanning business. How to keep your life, your marriage and your level of comfort intact away from all the conveniences of home and a 240 volt power point. So to help explain how to keep this level of comfort going off the beaten track, we're going to talk to an expert, Alan Johnson, the owner and founder of Melbourne's Piranha Off-Road Systems. And Piranha is one of the world's largest manufacturers of dual battery and other alternative 12 volt systems. And we've also brought along the very latest Coronet Caravan, the XT2 5050, the latest off-road product, exactly the sort of van that many couples might take to enjoy their great Australian adventure. Alan Johnson is the go-to guy, if I could say that, the, that people go to when they want 12 volt power solutions. Your four-wheel drive is a great place to start with the power. You've got an alternator that produces up to 100 odd amps when you're driving. That's a huge amount of capacity. You've got room in most four-wheel drives to put a second battery in there. So let's go and have a look at what we've done with this vehicle. A dual battery system means that those batteries are electrically separated from each other. Now if we take a 200 series Land Cruiser, we actually have a battery here and a battery here. And those two batteries, which are in feed deed, two batteries, are actually electrically connected as one big battery, giving you a higher starting capacity. Now in this particular vehicle, what we've got is the original starting battery over there, and here we have our auxiliary battery. This battery charges separately after the main battery has reached full charge, and this battery is used to run things like fridges, air compressors, over there, things like mobile phones, GPS's, navigation equipment, even laptop computers and camera gear. So this battery is basically your house battery in your four-wheel drive. Now the other thing that this battery can be used for and is used for is to help run accessories in your caravan. And that would typically be connected to your caravan with either a thing called an Anderson plug or with a 12-pin plug, not your normal 7-pin round or your 7-pin flat. What a 12-pin plug is, it's got seven standard pins for things like indicators, tail lights, stop lights and such but it's got bigger pins across the bottom which are dedicated for things like charging batteries and running fridges. These are physically larger so they can carry the current or the amperage that you need to do to make the system reliable. The second thing you have is a thing called an Anderson plug. These are rated at 50 amps but they can handle significantly more than that. One of the catches that I see very, very often is people go to the trouble of putting an Anderson plug in but they don't put adequate cable in. is actually approximately 10 metres from the alternator in this car to the batteries in the caravan. If the wire isn't big enough and heavy enough and the right quality, you're going to get voltage drop, which means your batteries will not charge correctly. What we've got inside here is we've got modern day LED lighting. Gone are kerosene lights and gas lights or incandescent globes. We've got brilliant white clean lighting. You can actually read by this of a night time effortlessly. But the most brilliant thing about it is the power consumption is so low. We've also got things like inverters. Now an inverter is a device that takes DC or battery power and makes it into AC like you've got at home. But like all things in life, there is a cost. Inverters potentially are power hungry creatures. Hair dryers, toasters, electric kettles, bread makers, all those things with heating elements in them draw huge amounts of power. Now in this van we've actually got two batteries in there and they're deep cycle batteries and they're typically about 100 amps each so you've got about 200 amp hour. Modern day vehicles come out with what they call a smart alternator. A smart alternator basically turns the alternator off or turns it to a lower output whenever it possibly can. One of the ways that aftermarket people can cope with these smart alternators is to put in what we call a DC to DC charger. This has more than one benefit. A DC-DC charger will take in whatever voltage we have available and it will step it up to exactly the right voltage for the chemistry of the battery that you have in your vehicle. The one limiting factor with these type of devices is you can't get really high capacity. So if you think about it, if you've got a maximum of say 20 amps or 30 amps, whatever it might be, and your alternator like in my car can put out 100 amps, you're actually cutting back the amount of energy going into your batteries, but you are getting it at the right voltage, and that's the important thing. This will compensate for voltage drop. You put this next to the batteries in the van, it doesn't matter what's coming into them, it will step it up. 
first most common type of battery you have is your flooded wet cell battery. Been around for over 100 years and it's your conventional ordinary battery. So they come in both deep cycle batteries, they come in hybrid and they come in cranking batteries. And of course in our modern four wheel drive, fantastic for running our fridges. The next type of technology along is your calcium type batteries. Your calcium batteries actually charge a little more quickly, have a longer shelf life, cost a little bit more money and a little bit better than your wet cells. Your third type of technology is AGM. Now AGM stands for absorbed glass mat and they come in two varieties. We've got spiral like this one here and these spiral batteries are absolutely brilliant. They're completely sealed. You can run them on the side, you can run them any way you like. You have spiral winding inside of them which gives you a huge surface area which means you get a massive capacity as well as very fast recharging. The biggest downsides are two things, they cost a lot more money but the other thing is too, you do need a higher voltage and that's something you need to understand. This is where possibly DC-DC might come into it. The other version of this is what we call flat plate AGM which is exactly the same chemistry, same type of charging regime but these batteries can't be used in an engine bay, they won't tolerate the heat where these spiral ones can go into an engine bay. We see in most modern caravans, guess what? Flat plate AGMs, they're the most popular. This little grey box here is actually the brains of this dual battery system in the vehicle. This actually is what monitors, controls the charging and does all the thinking for you. This is something that we have actually designed here in Australia and we're very, very proud of this. We sell these all around the world now. When you go to the later, smarter vehicles, you may need something different, but that's where it comes down to talking to your local supplier and getting the right information to get the right mix of products. If we take a vehicle, i.e. like a current model 150 series Prado is a good example. That vehicle is fitted with a smart alternator and that is capable of charging a wet cell battery quite effectively. A tray would be about $200, a battery probably sub $200 for flooded wet cell, $165 for charge control unit, some cabling, plugs and sockets and a battery monitor. That would run your fridge for probably an Engel fridge or a Waco fridge for between two to three days and do a beautiful job. Now, if you want to go the other side of the coin and you want to start running an AGM battery, you're talking from $200 to probably $400. Your charging system's just jumped up in price significantly. But what you've gained is a system that can recover in as little as probably two to three hours as opposed to five, six or seven hours. So we're not talking about a better system, we're talking about a system that's going to do something a little bit different for you. So if you wanted to get more than your two to three days, the options you have is to either add a solar panel into the system, you could obviously run the engine hypothetically every couple of days for a few hours or an hour or something, or you could actually have another battery in the car like I've done in my vehicle, which gives me the ability to run about five days without running the engine. Lots of choices. How to keep everything going in the bush is a fascinating subject. Uh, we've really just scratched the surface of this complicated issue today with Alan Johnson. However, you can read more details and other information in Caribbean World magazine.